welcome to this special 10th anniversary edition of the Blaine Game from the Belfast Waterfront Hall. Yes, the Blaine Game, the show that has more laughs than Heathrow Airport has runways. <laughs> I'm Tim McGarry and our regular panellists are, of course, Colin Murphy, Jake O'Kane and Neil Delamere. And you all know our special guest tonight. He started his stand-up career aged just 17. His first TV appearance was actually on this very show. After appearing on The Blame Game, our guest quickly became one of the biggest names in comedy. He's a huge star and an award-winning comedian who fills stadiums and sells out arenas across the globe. Yes, The Blame Game does that for people's careers. <laughs> for instance, next week, I'm appearing in the Arts Centre in Downpatrick. <laughs> Please welcome Scotland's finest, the fabulous Kevin Bridges! Kevin has very kindly come back to help us celebrate our birthday. We were actually going to have a birthday cake, but sadly that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all I said to Asher's was, <laughs> can I have a cake with the words, who do you blame for losing the gay cake case? <laughs> no sense of humour in there. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's been 10 years since the Blame Game started. People say Northern Ireland will never change, which is nonsense. I mean, pretty soon, if you're a Catholic and you go to Mass, you could end up sitting beside an orange man with an Irish passport. <laughs> but let's also be honest, ladies and gentlemen, 2016 has also been a pretty terrible year so far. Terrorism, storms, conflict, and worst of all, UTV have taken Julian Simmons off our screens. <laughs> Yes, mainland ITV took over the UTV and Julian was taken out of vision. If you ask me, the Brits have gone too far this time. <laughs> this is the last straw. Cromwell, famine, the penal laws, and now they've pulled our Julian off. <laughs> now, on with the show, the audience asked the questions and our panel provides some very unreliable answers. So, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, you were asked to help us with some questions. We have some questions here from the audience. Who's to blame for making me stand outside in the cold for so long? <laughs> I'm gonna need DLA now. <laughs> That's uh, Jackie in Portadown. If it was Jackie in West Belfast, you'd have DLA by now. <laughs> Who's to blame for the waterfront not selling buck fast? <laughs> Michael in Lurgan, I would imagine. Is it Lurgan? Cahill in Lurgan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to blame for Simon Hamilton being the love child of Jerry Adams and Naomi Long? <laughs> <laughs> Who's to blame for Translink Metro buses still running late in spite of a bus lane on every f street? <laughs> Stuart in East Belfast, who will be here in 10 minutes. <laughs> so what is our first question tonight? Our first question tonight is, who do you blame for Donald Trump? <laughs> ah, yes, the Donald. The reality TV star with a dead beaver on his head who can actually lead the free world. Donald openly boasted about groping women. And he thinks he's a tough guy. Oh, yeah? Well, come on over here, Donald, and try it on with Arlene Foster. <laughs> You'll I'd find pay, it, I'd pay to see that. I'd pay to see that. You'll find it pretty hard to make America great again from a hospital bed in Alton Gelvin. <laughs> Donald Trump was recently booed at a fundraising dinner organized by the Catholic Church. Seriously, when the Catholic Church can criticize your sexual peccadilloes, you know you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> but who can we blame for Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's very confusing if you're from Northern Ireland, though, because he's the only orange man who's also a Republican. <laughs> it, it's quite confusing. He, he did. He admitted. He said on uh, on air on a video that he he groped women and that he grabbed them by their, their nether regions. I'll say it as in the most polite way possible. By their genitals. Like my theory is that if you grab him though by his own genitals, the hair just hinges up like that. It's just <laughs> you know when you, know you stand on a pedal bin and it just got. I don't know if it makes that noise. Like that. He's only four percent behind. In the opinion, he could win. How, I blame Hillary Clinton. How, the, how bad is she? I know. Eleven women have came forward claiming that Trump acted sexually inappropriate, and he's still four percent. Fucking Bill Cosby could win. That's what <laughs> <laughs> and the guys. I think he's done all right, considering he's a billionaire psychopath that wants to run the world. But he's still 
something. He is, he is Cartman. Percent. He is Cartman from South Park. That was the best description I ever heard of him. <laughs> he just sounds like a yummy guy. He's just that voice during the, during the debates. Never watched the debates, and you're sitting there being from here watching those debates. You're looking at them going, "There's no way. There's no way they could be worse. They are worse." There's, there's Sammy Wilson's at home watching this, going, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> He's two percent ahead in some polls, that's and she's, uh, according to the poll of polls, which is the one I would listen to because um, that's also what my man used to call Pope John Paul II. The poll of polls. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ruth Patterson. Nobody's man. She's definitely advising him. Ruth Patterson. Definitely advising. Turns a shade. <laughs> exactly. Seriously. I want to see them, mate. <laughs> you could have Uncle Lumpus in real life. You could have real Uncle Lumpus. Charlie and a chocolate factory would come to life. Well, you mention uh, the politicians here. There are some very strange politicians here as well, and in this week, I don't know if you saw this, uh, Jeremy Paxman has a book out, mm. and he said at one point that Jerry Adams offered to give him a dog. <laughs> How terrifying would that situation be? We just, do you want a dog, Jeremy? <laughs> uh, we don't know what breed of dog it was, gun dog, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there is no border collie. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you want a dog, Jeremy? You go, yeah, yeah, wah, yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, does he do any tricks? Yeah, he can play dead. Okay. He's a good Catholic dog. He'll hump your leg, but he'll withdraw at the last minute. <laughs> why are you getting rid of him, Jerry? Jerry, Jerry? Yeah, well, he's a Rottweiler. Oh, are you scared of a Rottweiler? No, he's a black and tan, you gobshite. The other thing, we call him Billy Hutchinson because he's a PUP. <laughs> <laughs> no, I reckon he's got a Labrador, Jerry Adams. Why? Why? Just, I, that's what I would, if I was Jerry Adams, with the, I would probably call it Chucky, would you? <laughs> so, you can't this is we Chucky, our lab. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what sort of dog you have. I have a dog, and if, 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 if you have a kind of a greyhound sort of dog, our lads will come up, up and ask you questions about greyhounds that you're entirely unprepared for. And then you have to confuse them to give yourself time to get away. So somehow that came up to me the other day and went, well, do you race him, do you? Do you race him? I was like, ah, no, she's much faster than I am. And then... <laughs> I watched the vice, the vice presidential debate. You watched the vice? The vice, sorry, yeah. it's not a problem, no, time, relax, the vice. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, they're hints and what's the other Listen, Mike Pence. Tim Kane. Tim, Tim Kane and Mike Pence, that's, that's the important one. That's how you see who'll be in charge of America next year, after the inevitable assassination. I think <laughs> they, must, they must take the two. <laughs> so much. <laughs> I, I don't get it, how that guy can be taken so seriously. I know. I've helped old guys into a taxi in a more coherent state than Bob. <laughs> but people say they like him because he speaks his mind, but old people in pubs speak their mind every Friday night, but you don't encourage them. <laughs> Just a pat on the back, enjoy your night, mate. That's all it would take to defeat Donald Trump. Build a wall, make America great again, and enjoy your night, mate. <laughs> 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 the, the vice that, that's involved in, in American politics, right? And it's all drug scandals and sex scandals and everything. The DUP, this made the news. The DUP at the Tory party conference had a drinks reception. Champagne. End of story. That was just because there was champagne involved champagne. in it. It's the first time a DUP have ever had alcohol at any kind of reception ever. They went straight yeah. in with champagne. <laughs> straight in with champagne. <laughs> like, build up. Nope. Tea, book fast, nope. champagne. No. Nope. Champagne. <laughs> Sit in the champagne. Yeah, the big game has gone away, the, and then the all of a sudden the champagne. I would love to have seen it, because you could take advantage of them so much. You know, all these DUP boys rotting around, and you're like, I drink at the devil's bottom, I mean champagne. Would you like to drink at the champagne? And you're going, aye, have you got a pint of it? It's a serve in a big glass, is it? All right, we're back in a minute. <laughs> Just keep pouring, Marvin. There, just keep pouring. That's good, man. Yourself. Apparently, it was a very well attended event. It's the, it's the best attended event. Yeah, but they won't do it in Stormont, run. though. They won't do a joint, uh, a joint event with Champagne because if you just pop all the shinners, you just hit the ground straight away like that, <laughs> and they put an oily rag in the empty bottle. <laughs> When Ian Pearcey retired, they had a retirement due for him, and he complained that he wasn't treated very well by the DUP. They had a retirement due, and they spent £70,000 on a retirement due for Ian Pearcey. And I thought, that is a feck of a lot of diluted orange juice. <laughs> 70 grand. 70 grand and no booze. No booze. But they oh. all said it was a very cordial event after all. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, like that. And what is our next question tonight? Our next question is, who do you blame for gay cake? <laughs> After rumbling on for two years, this week, Asher's finally lost the so-called gay cake case. It's legally very complicated, but basically in Asher's, you can have your cake and eat it, but you can't have your cake and ice it. <laughs> the decision has been debated by politicians, lawyers and commentators, but to be honest, they're all missing the point. It's been two years. That cake must have gone off by now. <laughs> It'll be stinking. 
But who can we blame for the gay cake? Yeah, everybody's calling it all over the place. It's on the news uh, all this week. Is the gay cake row? That's what they're calling it. The gay cake row. Can we just clear this up once and for all? Cake is not gay, right? <laughs> Biscuits are gay, right? That's a well-known phrase, right? Gay as a biscuit. That everyone knows that, right? And gay cake row sort of diminishes what it was, which was a sexual discrimination case. That's they call it civil rights, wing, a whinging, fiending movement. Do you know what I mean? It's just. <laughs> It was, a, it was a case of discrimination, right? You mean it there's, wasn't? It, uh, but that's the thing, and they're trying to imbue sexuality on a cake. Like, a cake has no sexuality, there's no gen gender, you know what I mean? Except calling the caterpillar, that's the only cake with gender. <laughs> and, uh, which is something completely different in our house, by the way. And, uh, oh, Better believe it. <laughs> oh, there's an image in my head. But, and the week that's in it, with Bake Off Final, it's not fair, right? Because it's taken away from Andrew Smith, who's from here, and he's in the final. And uh, I know three, three women going, yay! <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I watch Big Off, I'm a fan, I like it. And uh, Andrew is great, but uh, his voice is really annoying. And uh, it really is, oh my God. It's just, right? oh my, you know, you know, no, you know I don't want to watch it. Oh, yeah, I watch it, yeah. He's got a sort of, a, he went to Cambridge, and he's a very educated person, and he's, he's talking very much like this here. <laughs> and what are we making this week? Oh, we're making Tudor things, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> He's a very talented man, but you're going, oh, 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 shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Um, but he's not from here. He can't be from here. He's on Bake Off. He has not made a sausage roll or a mushroom volavant once. <laughs> <Right, that's... laughs> he, the man is some sort of, you know, charlatan. That's all. They keep, saying, they keep saying he's from Derby. They keep saying he's from Derby, even Andrews, though he's actually yeah. from here. Because you see, he's one of those stealth Northern Irish accents. He's one of those ones that's changed, yeah. and you don't know, and until every so often he says one of those words, yeah. it gives everybody from Northern Ireland away. So he'd say, I'm just uh, putting the cake into the oven, and then the cake will be ready in about two hours! Hours! <laughs> no, no, the cake is done, so it is! And then... <laughs> Because you're only a little guy from here that was on Big Off a couple of years ago. He, uh, he's not like a man, Andrew's very sort of uh, level-headed and he keeps his cool, you know, but unlike your other boy, I can't remember his name, he bucked the thing in the bin, he lost it. He was properly from here, a big beard on him, and he got annoyed because something collapsed, he went, ah, start, see it. <laughs> lost it in the bin, that's what you want. Step it up your arse. <laughs> and then when Sue came over in their sort of lovely, sort of, hey, we could try again. Oh, the oven's a piece of shit. <laughs> He was, he, was, Absolutely he was so Northern Irish that he threw it in the bin and they didn't even collect the bin because no one told him that the bin days had been changed. That's, that's how Belfast he was. You see what I mean? The thing that annoys me about the Irish thing is, and God bless them, right, God bless them. Everybody's got an opinion and they'll fight for their right to have an opinion. But the wee Christians have been saying for a while, yes, we are earnestly praying to the Lord for an answer. He's answered them. He says no! <laughs> He says no. They went to the first court, the lost. That's God saying, hey, I like the kick. They went to the appeal court. It must be God taking a CB radio, really bad CB radio, trying to get through. No, no, I like this. Do you understand? They're my people too. But some of the people that have said some things about it have been genuine, hilarious, genuinely hilarious. Jim Allister, do you see what he said? No. The aggressive gay rights lobby. Like, who are they? Elton John with a hatchet, right? Rah! <laughs> Rah! The bin thing is, uh, that's how to stress out a middle-aged person. Wow, that is, that came through. Well, I got that the day before the, the change, right? I got it and on the Saturday, this letter came through going, what, the bin, what, the, Monday, Monday, <laughs> but it's Saturday. How are we ever going to be ready? No, <laughs> it's normally Thursday in our house. I'm, 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 oh, my my life is what around the... You got a letter. Oh, big posh South Belfast got a letter. <laughs> I got nothing. Somebody, somebody tweeted me. Somebody tweeted me, and I was all where I live with a lot of older people and their and their widowers and all this. And I, as you do, being a decent neighbour, I'm rushing out and I'm up and I'm knocking doors and going, the bins, the bins are going to be. Only, only the pajamas on. <laughs> and they're looking, going, yeah, he was a new lodge. You can take, you can't take a new lodge. I don't sure you can. <laughs> But that was the thing they did, that 40% uh, of the letters weren't delivered. They were found in a skip. That's appropriate. They were found in a skip, only because they didn't know which day the bins were being collected to put the, <laughs> the things in. And, uh, yeah, so they, they weren't delivered. And so 40% of the people in didn't know they're in the house. The next thing they can hear, boop, 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 what the fuck? And it was just... <laughs> That's how to get your heart rate going if you're over 40. Just, oh my God. Forget poppers, forget weird sex, just that. That's how to get the... This is what... That's how to sit in the cinema and get your wife fleeing over and go, did we leave the immersion on? What? <laughs> <laughs> This is, what, this is what's happened to this country, though. This is a big... There are 1,800 people here today. They're all asked to fill in a form, who do you blame for? 1,800 people, who do you blame for the council? And that's sorting out the bins. Yeah. The, 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 basically, Belfast City Council, they, they changed the days of the bins. And you think, Belfast City Council, that is typical. The balls up something that involves designated days. <laughs> <laughs> 
best food story this week wasn't the cake or the or even the bake off. Um, uh, it was the you know that marijuana is now kosher. Is it it's now kosher? You can get marijuana officially through do over Passover. I think it is. It's kosher. Also, you can smoke during Passover. That's kind of bad because, <laughs> as far as I know, during Passover you can't eat any cakes. <laughs> <laughs> But you're going to be stoned off your bin going, oh, unleavened bread again. <laughs> so Jewish people can get stoned and no Palestinians get shot as a result. <laughs> <laughs> One guy clapped that there. <laughs> you see the guy in America who, who couldn't get back into his house? He couldn't get back into his house in Arizona or somewhere because he was locked out. So instead of breaking a small window the way normally people yeah. he got in the chimney. He climbed down the chimney and got stuck in the chimney <laughs> and had to ring the fire brigade and they went, okay, <laughs> and turned him up and, and pulled him out on a rope and he was just all over him, right? And he's lucky he didn't call the cops in the US, they would have shot him. So... <laughs> <laughs> so what is our next question tonight? Who do you blame for disruptive audiences? <laughs> this week, Justin Bieber stormed off stage after urging teenage fans to stop screaming. Justin calls his millions of fans believers, presumably because calling them brain dead morons who listen to any old crap <laughs> would send out the wrong message. <laughs> when Keith Richards met Justin Bieber, the legendary Rolling Stones guitarist apparently said, Who the f are you? To be fair though, Keith Richards has been known to say, Who the f are you? whilst looking in the mirror. <laughs> but who can we blame for disruptive audiences? Have we got anybody in from Derry here? Yeah. Don't know. <laughs> I had a show last year. I don't know if anybody heard about that. <laughs> Everybody's heard about that. <laughs> Derry. I don't know if she's in. I've still stuck. I'm suffering through PTSD. You know that? <laughs> the first 20 minutes of the show, we just said this woman. Just going, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. There's a fucking smoke alarm going off inside her brain. <laughs> that's not a heckle. That's just like, you know, you ever clicked on a pop up virus? Yeah. <laughs> so that was me trying to deal with it, to try and close. And then another 500 pop up at the same time, like, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. <laughs> and it was crazy, it made the paper. But the people of Derry, the reaction was incredible. The next day I was in this, so thank you. There. <laughs> the next, she's in the tonight. Next, <laughs> <laughs> the next day. A guy, I've never heard something so chilling in my life. A guy walked up to me and he goes, Don't you worry, Kevin. She has been named and shamed. <laughs> He said it in a way as if he had her in the boot of his car or something like that. <laughs> and uh, I had to sort of tweet and just say that it was cool. She was just a bit drunk. I never knew what was going to happen to this poor woman. And it was in the local newspaper. An audience member said the heckling was horrific and branded it the worst night ever. Which, in Derry, the worst night ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's been worst nights <laughs> in recent history. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> you want to hear the hack on there? I don't leave. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Covering people's ears and things. Oh, that's what it Anyway, no hard feelings. Still, I hope she never gets sacked or took away in the back of your boot or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you ever done a gig in a prison before? No. Yes. yes. I've done yeah. that before. I've done no jail. Yeah. But there's nobody in it. I've done one. <laughs> when I was 18 in Shots Prison yeah. in Scotland. Yeah. And about 10 minutes into the gig, a guy stood up and went back to his cell. <laughs> that has never been talked. It's got a shite on my way to finish my life sentence. <laughs> You've got a lot of gigs now. People have those flipping phones all the time and they're filming yeah. stuff. You have that, you have people filming your gigs. I don't mind it as long as it's a Samsung Galaxy. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got a Samsung Galaxy? The first smartphone you can light a cigarette off. <laughs> I love the fact that the selling point was what they're waterproof. Yeah. I thought that was a brilliant idea for a phone that goes on fire. Ooh, clever. <laughs> Terminator, it goes on fire. Yeah. Jesus, put it in the water. It's not happening. <laughs> but yeah, they've, they've sent fire, fireproof boxes now because they're all going to be recalled. Yep. And there's a bag, and there's another box, and then there's another box. And, then, and the instructions, the, the instructions basically have been written by Brian Kendi because it's put the phone into the box, put the bag into the box, put the bag, <laughs> send the car around the world. That's what it is. <laughs> that's that's, that's box. Backs. Sorry. Backs. 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 If you want to do a Belfast action, you have to change the O's and the A's. So I box with my hand, but you back with your haunt. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Now, if you would like to ask the panel a question, just email us at blame.game at bbc.co.uk. So what's our next question tonight? Who do you blame for Brexit?
Yes, the UK voted for Brexit on June the 23rd because of BBC rules about impartiality. I am not at liberty to tell you which way I voted, so I'm afraid you'll never know whether I voted Remain or whether I voted to buck the country over a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I don't like foreigners. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm actually joking, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I actually voted for leave, but only because after we leave the EU, Neil Delamere will become a migrant worker. <laughs> And the only way to get him onto the show will be to smuggle him across the border in a lorry full of sheep and red diesel. <laughs> on the downside, the way things are going, if Neil insists on being paid in euros, he'll bankrupt the whole of Northern Ireland. <laughs> but who can we blame for Brexit? I blame the English. <laughs> uh, you voted. It's true. You voted to remain here. Scotland, we voted to... I think Scotland and Northern Ireland should melt and stay in Europe, and that would be great. We could become the European capital of shite weather and religious <laughs> intolerance. There was a move it's to do this, that it was called the, uh, the Celtic Union, which sounds like a really crap album you put on when you're trying to, trying to hope at somebody. <laughs> put on about the Celtic Union, will <laughs> Enya and a bagpipe. <laughs> uh, it's a pain in the arse, isn't it? I don't know why Theresa May's in such a hurry. She's triggered Article 50. don't know if anybody's read. Any of these 50 articles, never mind the last one. <laughs> but she wants to get it moving by March, which is soon. It took me about six months to get out of a Vodafone contract. <laughs> <laughs> it's 120% it's increase in uh, British people looking for Irish passports in August alone. And no offence to anybody, but uh, if, you're, uh, if you're English and you want to come over to the Republic of Ireland, I mean, I don't, en masse, I don't, I don't think you should be allowed to come over and, and take all the jobs off the Polish people. <laughs> It was the first time ever the newsletter basically had Brits out on the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> and the pounds fell on the euro. I don't know what it is, it's probably going to be about 20 quid for a Cornetto next summer. <laughs> on holiday. What I want to see is the Lawrence Stranraer ferry and the first time an orange man is stopped at Stranraer and asked for his passport. That's what I'm waiting to see. And he's forced to hand him an Irish one. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be fun. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much for that. Yes, indeed, some refugees from the jungle camp in Calais are due to be rehoused across the UK, and some of them will be sent here. Of course, you'll be able to easily recognise the refugees sent here. They'll be the ones holding the short straws. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is our next question tonight? Who do you blame for a peaceful summer? Yes, after a three-year standoff at Twidale Avenue, some fellas got to march past some empty shops, while some other fellas got out of their beds at seven in the morning to shout at them fellas. <laughs> you can say what you like about Northern Ireland, but we know how to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Personally, I was sorry to see Twidale go because it was the closest thing we ever had to a theme park. Forget Disney World, we had Disney's Frozen in time. <laughs> but who can we blame for a peaceful summer? What a country this is that that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> it is quiet. It was so quiet this, this, oh, this March season. On the 11th night, right, I'm driving home. Long Shore Road. Got a new car. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it was that quiet. Right, I was looking around. The 11th night's usually Boogaloo. Right, Shore Road, pick me Boogaloo. No disrespect to the Shore Road, where my wife is from. <laughs> I drove through red lights. Right? <laughs> and I realised I'd driven through red lights when I saw the little flashing blue light behind me. <laughs> so a big cop gets out, pulls me over. Sound big man, right? We want, I knew what I'm trying to check. Well, I'm not full, right? I'm not drunk, and I'm not blind. So I admitted to him, I said, tell you what it was, I was so distracted there. I said, I mean, so, so quiet. And the, it wasn't the reaction I got wasn't what I had to expect. The big cops said, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. Big I mean, oh, yes, no, aye. It is quiet now, it's quiet now, yes. I suppose it's good to see. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have to say, son, to be honest with you, the overtime this time of year usually decides whether I take a family to Disney World in Paris or Disney World <laughs> USA. <laughs> Twiddell. Twiddell was the thing. Twiddell was the thing. Now, Kevin, how can I? 
this, 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 is, this is the end of a little thing. Now, how do you explain this to you, right? You're not from here. The only way I can do it is to explain it like, like a children's story, okay? So we're going to do Twiddell like a children's story, a little kid's story. Are you sitting comfortably, Kevin? Yes. Boys and girls, are you all sitting comfortably? Yes. I shall begin. There was a village. <laughs> A lovely little hamlet full of lovely little people. There was a little orange man who every 12th of July marched past the village down to this field where he listened to sermons about abstinence and the evils of drink and then got pished and... <laughs> This happened for many, many years, Kevin. Year in, he went down. Year out, he came back. Year in, until one time, a long time ago. <laughs> three years ago, three years ago, yeah? <laughs> Suddenly, the locals... <laughs> the local residents decided this was not on. They were not, they were keeping an eye on this. They were keeping an eye on this orange man. And they said no, so... They said, no, the Parades Commission, which is something we've set up to basically make it worse than it already is, right? <laughs> they let the little orange man go to the field, but they wouldn't let him come home. <laughs> but this little orange man said, no, I am not giving up. The little orange man made himself a caravan. <laughs> he said, I will stay here. I will not talk to those little residents. I will stay here for as long as it takes. I will never go home. But here's the amazing thing, Kevin. Every year, the same little orange man walked back down the road to find physics. <laughs> <laughs> because what people didn't know was this was a magic caravan. <laughs> this was an orange man transporter. <laughs> Every year in the 11th night, the little orange man went into the caravan and was magically transported. He was right up to go back down. So after three years, three years, eventually the little orange man says, I got call Kim after all. And they have a chat and they find out they can come to a compromise. And Kevin, that should be where our story ends. But not in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Because even though there was a compromise, all of a sudden, Big Bad D. Fennel arrived. <laughs> and Big D. said he would huff and he would puff and he would blow the compromise down. <laughs> D. I am not your parish priest, D. You can't shout at me, D. No. No. Beautiful. Wasn't that beautiful? Aye. Fucking a child in this country. Imagine that. Having to go to sleep after that story. Exactly. Imagine him in a leather jacket there, reading you a story at night, right? Are <laughs> you lying there comfortably, are you? Still so one guess. Shut up. Listen. <laughs> so who's right. to blame then? Who's to blame? Peaceful summit. Qualifying for the Euros must have contributed to the peace. No? It did, yeah, yeah. We've always found that in Glasgow. Football helped to defuse sectarian <laughs> tension. <laughs> It's working for us over the years. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. We're coming up to Halloween, and do you know you can actually stay the night in Dracula's castle at oh, yeah. Airbnb? This, right. is, this is so weird, yeah. You can stay in Transylvania, in, in, you can go on an Airbnb competition and stay in Dracula's gaff. It's, in, it's called Bran Castle, presumably because you're going to shit yourself while you're in there. <laughs> And, and it's, it was associated with Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler used to impale people on wooden sticks, or as I like to call it, hurling. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, re it's a really <coughs> odd thing because uh, the, the way you win the competition, right, is that you have to say what you'd ask Dracula if you met him. If you ever met Dracula, what would you say to him? Like, what? I would just say, would you not stop drinking the blood? Like, wean yourself off slowly, have a bit of, a bit of black pudding or something like that, you'd be, you'd be glad. <laughs> Well, the good thing about Dracula is that Dracula will bite gay people, Dracula will bite straight people, right? So it says an awful lot about the place. When the worst monster in, a, in the minds of men has a more open attitude towards blood donation than... Uh, like, you think, so in the Republic, you can't, if you're gay, you can't give blood, and here there's a year deferral. Like, you think that Dracula cares? Like, you think Dracula's about to bite a guy going, eh, eh, gay, eh? <laughs> 
Helge. Ja, som gav, ah, Helge. Helge, ja, ja. Hvordan er det, Helge? Ah, Helge, ja, ja. Og jeg får tvært måske gå, be specific, og der er lagt en tvært måske, og mor og tvært måske gå. Hvis mor og tvært måske gå, yay! I have to drag you to Newry, though. You can Airbnb, you can Airbnb in uh, council houses in Derry. No, you're not supposed to, I, but you can. can. <laughs> on Airbnb, the, council, the house executive are given off by people in Derry who are letting out their houses. Possibly. On, they're not, I've looked it up. Yeah, they're letting out their houses. And it's on Airbnb. And you, no evidence. There is. Is there? The house executive said there is. No, they're worried about it. It should be, it'd be really because we call it Derry Airbnb. <laughs> But it's, uh, yeah. Can you imagine if you stayed there and you woke up in the middle of the night just hearing, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yes, indeed, Northern Ireland is to get its own version of Dragon's Den. Instead of entrepreneurs pitching innovative ideas to the Dragons, a bald man will walk into the Northern Ireland executive stage from the UDA and lift 1.7 million pounds. <laughs> Just time for this week's news. I will read you various newspaper headlines and I want you to be faster than Bob Dylan accepting a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Why can't we deport these thugs? Because they're MLAs. <laughs> Keeping your mouth shut stops you snoring. And stops screaming from the boot, says leading loyalist. <laughs> Revealed, a teenager's favourite word. No, revealed, that's not it, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> Groped on a plane. Bill Cosby to replace Samuel L. Jackson in movie sequel. <laughs> I still hear my late wife's voice at night, says Tom Jones. It's not unusual. <laughs> Army sex rap. British Legion launch new charity single. <laughs> And finally, naked except for a string of pearls. Julian Simmons goes out in style. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's the end of the show. Please show your appreciation to our panel. Colin Murphy, Kevin Bridges, Jiko Keane and Neil Delamay. Tim McGarry. Until next week, don't blame yourselves, blame each other. Goodbye. <laughs>